Hello and welcome to episode 49 of the Low Back Pain Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Grant Elliott with Rehab Fix Online Low Back Program. And today's topic is lifting belts. Should you wear one? Should you not? When should you wear one? When shouldn't you? How do I implement them? What do I tell my clients? Everything lifting belts. I hope it provides some clarity. If you have not listened to episode 48, you should absolutely do so. It is all about sex and low back pain. Yes, sex and low back pain, the different positions that are best for either partner, how to help mediate low back issues depending on the type, the type of low back issues that you have. And it, it is a real concern. It is a real point of um, you know stress in many, many relationships because a lot of people with low back pain, 84% to be exact, experience low back pain with physical intimacy. So it is an important topic. I do highly advise that you go listen to it just for your own education, but especially if you feel as though you identify with those particular struggles. Now today, lifting belts. This is something I get a lot of questions on because a lot of people are under the impression that lifting belts protect their spine or will prevent their spine from breaking or that it's necessary. And those are simply not true. I think it's important to start with what a weightlifting belt is not. A weightlifting belt is not a magical spine protector. It is not going to prevent low back injuries. It's not going to prevent uh, low back um, faults. It's not going to prevent, uh, it's not some magical spine protector, okay? It's just simply not. It's not what it is, okay? What is a weightlifting belt? A weightlifting belt is a tool that can be helpful for cueing you to generate proper intra-abdominal pressure to maximize your force generation and output through that particular lift. So let me first start with a general principle. I'm painting with a broad stroke here, okay? When should you wear a weightlifting belt? Well, if you have low back pain, you know, a weightlifting belt takes away the back pain, then you can wear it temporarily while you're in a proper rehab program because it's not like you can just wear a weightlifting belt for the rest of your life with every single exercise you do, just ignoring the back pain that's there. You obviously need to correctly address it, but if you fall in the category of someone with low back pain and you notice a weightlifting belt immediately improves it, then of course, feel free to wear it. If you're someone who maybe has struggled with low back issues in the past and you just are an avid gym goer, and you want to wear one, but you want to know when it's appropriate. Generally speaking, what I tell people is if it's about six reps or less that you're performing on a lift, meaning it's heavy enough to where you cannot perform more than six reps, then I would go ahead and and wear a belt. That's kind of just a general rule of thumb that I have personally created in my own opinion. Sometimes for me, if I'm pushing myself really, really hard, I'll, you know, I'll wear, I'll wear a weightlifting belt for something that I can squeeze out maybe seven, maybe eight max. Okay. But for the most part, people who are at a moderate intensity level, maybe from rep ranges eight to 15, it's usually not necessary. And you only want to wear a weightlifting belt if you need it. Okay. And also you truly want to learn how to use your intrinsic weightlifting belt prior to using one in the gym. What do I mean by that? Many, many people use a weightlifting belt as a crutch. You have a weightlifting belt inside of you already. It involves your diaphragm, your core, and your pelvic floor. Learning how to use these properly through belly breathing, diaphragmatic breathing tactics and training and proper bracing strategies, that is your own weightlifting belt that you can use to generate force, to generate pressure in the abdomen so that you can stabilize your spine on your own. And if you are new to the gym, you're new to weightlifting, and you're immediately running uh, to a weightlifting belt, you might be preventing yourself from learning these essential principles to operate optimally as a human being. You might be cutting your learning short or maybe cutting it entirely of how to use these intrinsic bracing mechanisms that are so important, so important to moving the right ways, breathing the right ways, functioning the right ways in all different settings. So I think that you should learn these methods first before even considering a weightlifting belt because you don't want to use one unless you need to and unless the circumstances is right. 
So I highly advise you uh, learn these strategies before just jumping to a belt. Now, if you choose to wear one, how should you do it? In my opinion, once again, this is just my opinion, I think you should be able to put two fingers between the belt and your belly. This is so that you can expand into the belt so that you can generate pressure outwards into the belt and then the belt is able to push back once you hit it. You should not be cinching it on like a corset. You see a lot of people in the gym sucking their belly in as much as they can and then pulling that weightlifting belt as tight as they possibly can. This could be counterproductive. This could make your stability worse. And how is that? I'm going to give you two analogies right now. First, let's say you have an empty pop can. An empty pop can. You probably remember as a kid, you were able to stand on an empty pop can and it wouldn't break unless you moved or unless something happened, right? So I want you to imagine when your abdomen is full with air, properly stabilized, properly pressurized, that's like a full pop can. Uh, Full meaning rotund, you know, round, uh, not filled with fluid necessarily, but full, full canister, okay? Now, we all know if there was a slight crinkle in that pop can, slight crinkle, and you stood on it, it would immediately collapse, right? If you are sucking in your belly while you're weightlifting, even without a belt, if you're sucking in your belly, a lot of people are stuck in the early 2000s, activate your transverse abdominis, suck in your belly, draw your belly in. That's gonna protect your core. No, the answer is no. The answer is no, no, no to that one. That's like standing on a crinkled pop can. You wanna be a full pop can. We call it the buttress of support, the pressurized canister. That's how you want to be. Another example is a teeter-totter, okay? The center of the teeter-totter where that post is that is balancing it so it can rock back and forth. Imagine if that part of that post was the skinniest, the skinniest and the smallest of the entire teeter-totter itself. Then you have two large weights on either end. That has the potential to snap, right? That's not a very strong teeter-totter. Instead, what if the center of that teeter-totter, the portion that was resting on the center post, was the thickest, the largest, the widest? That would make the most sense, right? That can support the most amount of weight. That's how I want you to think about your abdomen, about your core, your belly. If you are sucking in your belly and you're cinching it tight like a corset, you are removing your ability to properly pressurize your abdomen to properly use your diaphragm, your core, your pelvic floor, these things are not going to be functioning optimally and it could potentially reduce your stability with whatever task or exercise you are partaking in. So I highly advise you consider these things when you are approaching the concept of using a weightlifting belt. Once again, there's nothing inherently wrong with it, but I encourage you to learn how to use your weightlifting belt intrinsically, the one that you were born with first. Then, if you're becoming more skilled in the gym and you're approaching heavier lifts and you want to put that weightlifting belt on with room to fit two fingers between your abdomen and the belt to expand into it, then feel free to do so. I do that. There's no reason you can't, right? If you are always using a weightlifting belt as a crutch or you could be back pain free, but you're wearing it all the time because you're afraid you're going to hurt your back. That is not a good usage of a belt. Okay. You're developing a, um, a bad relationship with the belt. You're developing a, a fear and lack of confidence with your back. Okay. It's not good to think if you're not wearing a belt, your back's going to snap. Okay. That's a very fearful and fragile mindset. You don't want to develop that mindset. Okay. You don't need a belt. I personally don't feel as though I need to wear a belt, but if it gives me that extra 2% performance and an extra 2% psychological confidence, is it worth it to me? Yeah. Do I think I'm going to hurt myself deadlifting close to 600 pounds if I'm not wearing a belt? No. I have no fear of hurting myself with a deadlift because I've adapted to these movements. I'm strong with them. I'm not concerned. But if that belt is enough, if it, given the context, right, if it's enough to give me a little bit boost in performance, which I can feel that it does at the higher numbers, if it's enough to give me a little bit of mental confidence, 
which I feel also does, and it helps me be more aggressive with my lifts, then why would I not, right? It all is based on the context of the individual, and each circumstance should be addressed as such. So if someone is just telling every single person alive, wear a belt, they're not, they're not right. If someone is also telling everybody alive to never wear a belt, they're not right either, Okay. It's circumstantial. And I hope that this podcast help you kind of figure out where you're at on the spectrum, if you should wear one, if you should not, when you should, or how you should. These are the principles that I live by. These are the principles that I instruct my clients with, and we're pretty successful in doing so. So if you would like to apply these with your own life, feel free, because it's ultimately my mission to help as many people as I can across the world through online uh, low back coaching to get you back into the gym to get you back into weightlifting. All of my clients are squatting and deadlifting by the end of our coaching together, by the end of my program. Everybody is squatting and deadlifting. That is a mandatory task. And it's funny because so many people are told to never squat again, to never deadlift again, to never exercise because they have low back pain. It's just a joke, right? Deadlifts are bad for your back. Don't do it. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Your doctor doesn't lift, bro. That's just the truth, okay? Dallas and squats are fundamental movements and we should be strong with them. We should be powerful with them. We should be confident with them and I want to see you back to doing not only those but anything else you want to do without pain or worry so that you can get back to 100% quality of living. So let me know if you would like to accomplish that as a team. I would love to meet with you. I would love to talk about everything and get the ball rolling so that you can have a structured plan to lead you to success in a way that you can learn how to do it so that you can maintain it. And you can sustain those results. Submit an application on my website if you would like to meet with me to go over exactly how to accomplish that. Finally, if you appreciated this podcast and you learned something from it, please leave a five-star rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. If you're watching on YouTube, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for for the YouTube algorithm. If you're watching on YouTube, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. Share with a friend who is into weightlifting, wears a weightlifting belt, does not wear a weightlifting belt. If you think they would appreciate the content, please share this with them and send anyone my way who you think would benefit from uh, the topics I post related to resolving your own low back issues. As always, move more, move in nature, move in the sun. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.